Today's episode of the podcast was intended to go a little bit differently. However, I recorded the entire episode only to discover when it was all finished that nothing actually recorded at all. And so I'm regrouping a little bit here and we are going to dive into a podcast episode where I get you up to speed on my stripe pipe sweater and that I most importantly share with you some really amazing things that were sent to me from some really fantastic and generous creators. So if that sounds like just your idea of cozy, get comfortable and let's dive in. <music> Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands and Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and I will be your host. Now, I'm going to start this thing off with full transparency. I filmed this entire episode only to discover that nothing recorded, and that is always a very deflating feeling, especially when you were planning on doing an unboxing of sorts with three particular items or three particular um packages that were sent to you from makers. And I can't go back and repackage all of that and do that again, because that's number one, not honest. And number two, virtually impossible. In fact, if I reach over here, all the packaging carnage is right here from what I just did and shared with you. In fact, I have the audio file to prove it. Now these were all sent to me. I did not pay for any of these. I'm gonna show you three things. I did not pay for these, full transparency. They were sent to me out of the goodness of these folks' heart hearts. Um, and, and as a way to, I, I wanna help promote these businesses. These are small businesses and creators. And so I'm opening these here and sharing these with you. And if you see something here that you like, check out their businesses down below in the description box. I will link to them. You can go check them out. I, I love to be able to help support other makers and this is my way of doing that. But just so you know, I did not pay for these three items with my own money. I had to kind of regroup. I, um, I'm supposed to be at my son's hockey practice right now, but, this is just something I need to get done and make available to you guys. And so I apologize if it kind of seems a little scatterbrained right now, but I'm making the best of the situation. And I think you're gonna find something here that you can take away and enjoy. So what we're gonna do, um, I had talked a lot about some other things regarding where I find my knitting inspiration. Um, based on a question that somebody had left in the Wool Needles Hands tip line. This is a place over at WoolNeedlesHands.com where you can go and leave me suggestions for future videos. Most of the time those will be dedicated to midweek rambles, but sometimes I'll pull questions and I'll answer them in podcast episodes. Usually one question will be an entire episode, but for the sake of today, this is just something I wanted to chat about just a little bit with you guys because it got me thinking. And so that's what I'm going to do first is I'm going to share with you a question that somebody left for me over on the Wool Needles Hands tip line and talk a little bit about it with you. It says, hi, Taylor, you've done lots of useful content about using Ravelry. I wonder whether you could do something about using Instagram for inspiration. I'm not currently on there as I have mixed feelings about social media, but I'm starting to think it might be a good idea. So this got me thinking because when it comes to knitting inspiration, that's where it kind of got me thinking is like, what is it that I use for knitting inspiration primarily? And it made me realize that I really don't rely on Instagram for knitting inspiration. Maybe I used to, in fact, I used to a while ago, but I haven't used Instagram as a source of, um, as an intentional source of knitting inspiration for quite some time, I tend to use something else. When it comes to my particular, where I like to go for knitting inspiration outside of Ravelry, which is primarily where I go for knitting patterns, but I also go there for inspiration as well. I prefer Pinterest. I feel like Pinterest is a great place to go where everything is set up for what, based on things that you look at and spend time viewing and not necessarily based on things that you interact with in a social a kind of in a social way, I guess you could say like Instagram is. I feel like there's no social strings attached. You don't have to interact with things the same way that you have to do that um, on Instagram, on Pinterest. And I just feel like if you're looking for a place to go for knitting inspiration only, and you're not interested in the social aspect of Instagram, definitely try Pinterest. It's one of my favorites. We'll head into my Pinterest and I'll show you just briefly what it is that I'm talking about here and why it is that I like it so much. So I'm going to open up the app. And as soon as I open up the app, I'm going to see a lot of different things related to things I've looked at recently. So right now, as I open this, 
it's showing me sweaters, it's showing me Christmas decor, minimalist Christmas decor, because this is something I searched recently. It's showing me outfit ideas that kind of fit the aesthetic that I'm into. It's showing me Thanksgiving decorations for classroom doors, because that's also something I've been looking at lately. So it's giving me lots of things that every single one of these, well, not every single one, but a good majority of these fit something I have been looking at. And some of them are advertisements that aren't necessarily linked to something I've been looking at. However, this skincare advertisement, this color, uh, color science or whatever this is, that is a product I've purchased in the past. So that's kind of why that's there. It's super creepy. But other than that, this is all pretty on the nose for me. But what I want to do is I'm thinking about knitting. And if you look up at the top, it shows you some topics up here. Uh, wrapping, knitting, knitting inspo, gouache art, watercolor reference, style my knits, my craft closet, drawing. This is These are all things that relate to things I've searched. So it's already giving me concepts to kind of like rabbit holes to dive down. And that can be dangerous, but that can also be helpful when you're looking for just plain and simple inspiration. You don't need to interact with people. You're not trying to be social. You just need to be inspired. So if I'm going up here and we're talking knitting inspiration, I could simply just tap on knitting broad open and just see what it shows me. Maybe I'm a brand new knitter and this is all I need. I just need to look at these and see what it shows me. I am bound to find something here that inspires me. Imagery, whether, yeah, it, it could just be imagery. It might be a particular pattern. It might be like some kind of a editorial, like photo shoot for a designer, who knows, but it's going to be in some way linked to knitting, or I could tap on knitting inspo and we're narrowing it down more. This is inspiration for knitting things. I might be inspired to knit. Of course, some of it's going to be advertisements for things that you can purchase and you can pass those by or you can even hit the three dots next to that and say, you know, why am I seeing this or hide this because it's not interesting. It's not what I'm interested in. And then Pinterest pays attention to that. So this is one way to do it. Maybe I am looking for something in particular. So I go to search and I type in, you're going to see all sorts of things I've searched here, um, hand knit sweaters. Maybe I'm interested in hand knit sweaters and I need some inspiration with that. So this is going to give me hand knit sweaters. Maybe I really want to make sure it's showing me as often as possible patterns. So hand knit sweater patterns. And here we're going to see a lot more patterns that go along with these hand knit sweaters to give me inspiration. Some are patterns, some are not. Some are promoted by Kohl's, but she's wearing a sweater. So it's still kind of tapping into that inspiration. You don't have to interact with any of this. However, maybe you see something like this cardigan here, and I don't know, I can't read that to know if that's a pattern, but I have a feeling that it might be. It's Russian, so I'm not so sure. But maybe you love this cardigan and you wanna see more pictures like that. So you open this one, scroll down, and you have more images that are similar to this particular one. And you know, if you see something here that kind of taps into your inspiration, follow it and see what that's all about. You can save some of these to pin boards if you want to collect the ideas for some kind of a mood board. So I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm just going to suggest that if you are kind of in between or on the fence about starting Instagram for the purpose of knitting inspiration, try Pinterest first because I feel like it's a really good way to find a lot of that inspiration without having to have that like string the strings attached feeling the feeling that you need to interact with something in order to feed the algorithm and teach it what you what you want to see this is a way that you don't really have to do that um there's there's no personal element there's no social element to this and i'm not saying that i don't like being social with people i just feel like there's a time and a place for that and when i'm seeking inspiration i really don't need the social aspect of that generally speaking you may be different and that's fine and it takes all types but for me personally I just want to see visual image. I want imagery to help inspire me. And this is a way that I can gather that without those personal strings and social interaction strings attached. So hopefully that provides at least my insight, whether or not you take that and run with it is completely up to you, to anybody who might be interested. But I always just kind of feel like Pinterest trumps Instagram when it comes to knitting inspiration. I want to move on to something I wasn't planning on doing in this video, um, but I'm going to kind of do double duty with this. This gorgeous, amazing project bag that you see here was 
made and gifted to me by Emirates of Stony Lake Textiles. I had talked about this particular bucket bag on an episode of the podcast, not this particular one, but this version of this bucket bag, um, about a year ago on an episode of the Midweek Ramble where I was talking about my favorite project bags on Etsy. And it was all based on um, my favorite project bags that I've seen on Etsy, not ones I personally own. And this is one of them by Stony Lake Textiles that I had seen and I had shared on that video. Well, Emirates got in touch with me and she was very grateful for the shout out on that video and I was able to help send some business her way and that's always so awesome. And she asked if she could create this bag for me and that is so generous. And so she did, she made this for me and it was just sent to me and I'm in love with this. It is gorgeous. This fabric is stunning. The whole bag is absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous bucket bag construction. It has a waxed canvas bottom here. Everything is so beautifully constructed and sturdy and hardy. It has a strap here if you want to carry it around your um, over your shoulder. You can take these off and store it inside the bag if you don't want to use that. It has this closure at the top so that you can cinch it shut to kind of hold everything inside. It's stunning. And inside this, it wasn't up until very recently, but I wanted to immediately start using this as soon as I opened it. But I am holding my stripe hype sweater in here and I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So I'm gonna pull this out so I can share with you what's inside this. This has some, it has, okay, first of all, there's this awesome pocket right on the front here. Loving that, it's a deep pocket. And then inside the project bag, is this really lovely lining. I don't know if, how well you're gonna be able to see inside, but can you see that striped fabric in there? I don't know if you can see that, but it's got pockets all around the interior of the bag. And then it also comes with this little keychain hook that's inside the bag as well. And it's just fabulous. I love this. So this is by Stony Lake Textiles. Um, she sent the, here's, this was attached to the bag, which I have taken off uh, since recording initially, but this was attached to the bag. It has the care instructions on the back side, And then this was in the package and it says, thanks so much for the shout out on your podcast, Taylor. I'm very, a very small and slow made shop and greatly appreciate your respectful approach. Enjoy the tote. Many thanks again, Emirates. And this is kind of like the business card that's included. Now I'm having issues with focusing. It's just, you know, it's one of those days. So loving that. I, Emerence, if you happen to be watching this, thank you so much for this generous gift. It really means so much to me. I'm excited to use it. I'm already using it now for my stripe pipe sweater and it is absolutely stunning. I will link to Stony Lake Textiles down below in the description box so you can check it out. Fantastic bags and this one is just gorgeous. Okay, another um, package that I opened in my previous recording was from Red Stag Fiber. This is um, dyed by Joshua Graff of Red Stag Fiber. He reached out to me on Instagram not long ago asking if he could send me some yarn and I was more than happy to receive yarn from him and to share it here with you guys. But this is Red Stag Fiber. Look at these gorgeous colors. How pretty are those? Such beautiful fall colors. This is antique leather. And this is on 100% non-superwash Peruvian wool. It's 328 yards, 100 grams. It's a sport weight yarn. This is called a classic. Same Peruvian Highland wool, sport weight. And then this last one is on 70% superwash merino, 20% yak and 10% nylon. And this is Edinburgh Castle. This is a fingering weight yarn. And look at that gorgeous like espresso coffee bean color. Love it. And it even has a, a deer progress keeper. It's lovely. Just beautiful. Josh, thank you, Joshua. Thank you so much for sending this out. This is an awesome awesome thing to receive. It's absolutely gorgeous. It also came with this. This is an insert that comes um, in the package, kind of like their uh, business card, contact card. And on the back of this, it shows patterns that have featured their yarn and some of their other favorite patterns. And I think that that's awesome. So Red Stag Fiber, this is beautiful. I love it. And I'm excited to share that with you guys. Okay, the last thing that I opened and shared with you um, already, but I'm doing it again here, is 
a set of, okay, let me, I want to read to you what came with this so that I can make sure I do this justice. So this was in the package and this is from Brenda Curtin of Knitter's Elegance. And it says, hello, Taylor. These are my needle size markers. They're designed to be clipped to your work shortly after you cast on. That way, if you take the needles or hook for a different project, you will always know what size you need when you go back to your work in progress. The set has 10 markers, one through 10 for US sizes. If requested, I can leave out some sizes and put other sizes in. For instance, if they want metric needle sizes, they would be there would be other sizes in the set. I can also do letters for those that want American crochet hook sizes. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada and make these with whatever beads I find interesting. I'm currently listed on Etsy under Knitters Elegance and I'll link to that down below. And you can email her at, brend, at brencurtain at gmail.com. I hope you like my treat to you. Warm, warmest regards, Brenda Curtin. I think this is fantastic. So these are little progress keepers. Uh, that's what they look like, but they have the size of the needle that you're using so that should you set your project down or use the needle tip for some other project, you can come back to it and know what size you were using. And here they all are. And they're on these little, they're little lobster clasps. So I'll take one off here so you can see it close. How cute is that? And you put that on there and then you'll remember what needle you were using. I think that's just precious. And they're so pretty as well. And I think those are gonna come in handy. I have had situations where I've needed to be reminded what size needle, I mean, I think I've talked about this before, what size needle I was using. And this is a fantastic, especially socks, if you're knitting them one at a time, this is a good way to remember what size you used if you set the project down and come back to it later. So that is Knitter's Elegance and those are adorable. Well, I'm glad I was able to share that with you here. Oh goodness, it is so frustrating when you film an entire episode and then you realize it wasn't filming at all and you've just been speaking into the void for the entire time. So I'm happy to be able to share this. Definitely check these makers out. I think these are all just so cool and I'm grateful that they would send these out to me and I hope that you can find something there that inspires you as well. Now before I go, the last thing I want to share with you is my Stripe Hype sweater. I was not going to share this with you today because I have not made very much progress in all of the time that I have been away um, or that between the last time I shared this and now the progress I've made is really nothing to speak of. And that's just because I haven't been knitting very much um, for various different reasons. And I think about knitting all the time, but sometimes it just doesn't happen as much. So if you're in that place right now where you're feeling the pressure to knit projects, but you're just not able to get much done, you're not alone. It's just the way things are. And that's kind of the way it is for me. But here is my stripe pipe sweater so far. And look, I've got a little bit of a sleeve. And so what I wanted to do here is just to throw this on so we could see what it looks like so far. Um, and yeah, and go from there. And, and by doing that, I know it'll help to kind of give me that push I need to get work done on this because there's just not enough, this is, this can be done, right? This is, this does not, this isn't going to take that much longer if I just put pedal to the metal. Okay. So let's go ahead and give this thing a try on and see how it looks. I have all of this packaging stuff on the floor here. Goodness gracious. Okay. Let's throw this on. Okay. This is going to be interesting because I'm wearing a turtleneck. But we'll see. Okay. Now, if you want to know more about like all the drama surrounding this particular sweater, there is a video. I'll link to it so you can kind of know. Um, but I went through quite, you know, quite something with this, like to the point of thinking I was not going to, I was going to be frogging this. Um, but here we are. So here it is. There's my sleeve. It's very boxy and wide. And my sleeve so far is pretty wide. I mean, you can kind of see how wide that is, but I'm thinking that everything is going to turn out just fine. Now, you know why I'm saying that if you've been watching the podcast, because I had my doubts, but I think, I think it's going to make for a really nice kind of oversized fit of a sweater. I'm like, why? I feel like my face, I'm missing something. I forgot to put these back on. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's looking really good. I'm thinking this, the sleeves are going to be kind of big, but I'm working them down and tapering them down. And so I think that once I get them narrowed out more as it gets to the cuff, I think everything is going to look proportionate. So that is the status of my stripe pipe. I'm going to take this off now. I just wanted to show you it is still here. Progress is being made, though it is slow. All right, there you have it, folks. That is the second go around for this episode of the podcast. I, um... 
you guys mean so much to me and your you know commitment to the channel coming out and seeing everything I have going on here you guys just make this whole thing go around and you don't even know how much I appreciate you and and all of your support thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today um I hope you enjoyed this episode. You don't know the difference. You don't know that all of this was filmed, you know, prior. So you're probably thinking, no big deal, carry on. But either way, I enjoy being able to spend this time with you guys today. So thank you so much. If you took value from today's episode or enjoyed yourself at all, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe. Click the bell icon for more content. I post every Wednesday and every Sunday. And if you would like to help further support the Wool Needles Hands channel, check out the Patreon page. It is linked down below in the description box. You can also scan the QR code you see on your screen. New content for November is coming within the next week, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for your support. And until we see each other again for Wednesday's episode of the Midweek Ramble, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.